To get you ready for OU Texas, what better way to do it than having a man on who was very productive during OU Texas, went two and one. We'll talk with Jordan Evans on today's episode of Locked on Sooners. You are Locked on Sooners, your daily podcast on the Oklahoma Sooners, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Sooner Nation? Welcome to Locked On Sooners, and thank you for making Locked On Sooners your first listen every single day. We're free and available on all podcast platforms and on YouTube. Subscribe, hit that notification bell to let you know when new episodes drop. My name is John Williams. You can follow me on Twitter at John9Williams. My buddy's here is Josh Helmer. You can follow him on Twitter at Josh on Ref. And joining us today on Locked On Sooners, we got the man who was, again, incredibly productive during the OU Texas rivalry. We got Jordan Evans joining us on today's show. Ignore me as I get all the things straight. <laughs> this is our first time to do three people at once. But Jordan, man, welcome to Locked On Sooners. What's happening? Appreciate you. Yeah, we're so excited to have you on for OU Texas Week. I mean, we were looking back at some of the stats, and you had a 14-tackle day, an 11-tackle day, a 10-tackle day, went 2-1 and one against the Longhorns. And we're going to talk a lot of OU Texas today. But first, I just kind of want to get your impressions of the Oklahoma Sooners heading into this game. 5-0 and on the season, a team that is top three nationally offensively and defensively. So what is your kind of biggest takeaway from the 5-0 and start? I think it's just the jump from year one to year two. I mean, I know a lot of fans and people or critics are watching and saying, oh, they haven't played anybody yet or whatever the narrative is. But regardless, you know, numbers don't lie. And so seeing the jump from year one to year two, whether it was good or bad opponents last year, defense and offense struggled at times. And seeing that they're actually capitalizing on their drives, capitalizing on stops and turnovers and things like that. That's the some that's one of the biggest things. And that's obviously in a, a credit to what Venables has done from year one to year two. Jordan, great to uh be hanging out with you, man. Thanks for joining the the show with us. Uh, first, before we you know dive more into Oklahoma and what's going on with the Sooners, what what's going on with you, man? How's life treating you? What's uh what's kind of the Jordan Evans update right now? Man, life is good. I'm always a blessed man, so I always see the good in every day. Right now, I'm in the the limbo world of training hard every day, waiting on a call. Still, I'm an NFL free agent right now. I just finished up in the XFL where when I played, I had a good season, but did deal with some more injuries. And so that's kind of been the battle I'm at right now, but I'm healthy in some of the best shape I've been. And uh, I'm always prepared and ready for a call. That's awesome, man. Uh, you know, we, everybody in Sooner Nation, obviously uh, rooting for you in that respect and, uh, and hoping that happens for you shortly. Well, you know, you mentioned the jump year one to year two and outside of the, the obvious for novices like ourselves, it's, hey, uh, they're, they're one more year in the system. Why, why has Oklahoma made that jump? I think it's maturity. Um, I think it's also just compatibility with players to coaches. I mean, you have year one and Venables and his staff is trying to get into these players what they want well it doesn't take one year to do that you know it takes some time and then it takes time for those players to take ownership and leadership and do that in the same and i think one of the greatest examples that we're seeing right now is through danny stutzman you've seen how high of a level that he's playing at the people around him are starting to up their level and that's because you're seeing the players mature as well as the coaches maturing with the players i think Oftentimes the the turnover and changing from one system to another can often be underrated a little bit. Is that something that you ever had to deal with? Kind of I, I know you didn't really have to deal with it during your college career, but right. at the NFL level, did I know you played with, you know, maybe was it was Mike Zimmer there during your time? No, he had, he had left the year before. Okay. Uh, but I did have a handful of coaches come through. I had one, two, three, four defensive coordinators. So I had uh, my, my rookie year, there was Pauly Gunner. And then when Pauly left, we hired a guy named, uh, we called him T.A. And then T.A. halfway through this, actually early on the season, got fired. And Marvin Lewis, who was our head coach, took over as D.C. And then I had Lou in a room with my last three years. So, yeah, there's a lot of changes. Philosophies are different. The way they, I mean, there's, for a lot of fans that don't know football, 
there's so much when it comes to the game. I mean, there's so much technique, so much alignment assignment that people don't understand and that coaches come and bring a whole different look. So, yeah, it's a lot different than what Alex Grinch might have taught compared to Venables, and you can see just from, from the eye view of the differences. Well, a couple of things uh, outside of just, hey, th these guys clearly understand the defense better. Uh, you mentioned Danny Stutzman. I think everybody sees what he's doing and right. has, has been impressed. What's kind of impressed you about those yeah. guys defensively? Man, they, they fly around. They want, they're having turnovers. I mean, first drive last week, pick six, you know, uh, the stuff like that that you're seeing. We already had, I mean, I don't even know how many turnovers we had. We've had, what, two pick sixes whole bunch of turnovers. The only thing I want to see more sacks, we haven't gotten all there just yet, but we are being disruptive and you're seeing them making QB hurries. But yeah, you're just seeing the production. A productive player and a productive defense gives points back to the offense. So big time fumbles, sacks, picks, that type of stuff you see translate over and over. And next, you know, our offense is putting up 60 points a game. Yeah, they're averaging 2.4 turnovers a game right now. Which yeah, is that's amazing. That's fantastic. And you talked a little bit about the pressure aspect. And this is something we've mentioned on our show at times too, is okay, we're not creating a lot of sacks, but they are creating effective pressure. Just talk a little bit about how much just pressure matters to quarterback play. And even in the run game, when you're, when you're getting into the backfield, you know, if you're not necessarily, you know, creating sacks, just getting into the backfield and how much that can disrupt an offense. Right. It's all about timing. If you disrupting timing, it disrupts the offense. Timing with receivers' routes, that's why you're taught to jam receivers. Timing with quarterback reads, that's why you want to get a hand they face and pressure them, get them out their spot. Blowing up blocks jacks up the timing of the run game. Running back can't read the run and stuff like that. So when you are disruptive in any form of timing, it can jack the entire offense up. And like you said, we might not be getting the quarterback on the ground as a sack, but he's not comfortable. His timing's off, and you're seeing a lot of production from the front end to the back end because of that. Well, you were a part of a, a lineage of linebacker play at Oklahoma that look, it's, it's prestigious, right? To be a linebacker at the university of Oklahoma mm -hmm. and uh, Danny Stutzman, we just see him continue to elevate. I've said right here that, I mean, if he keeps doing what he's doing, I think he's going to win the Butkus award. He's certainly yeah. in that discussion and he's playing like an all American, I think, but you know, you watch him, you've played the position. What about Danny individually? I mean, the jump that he's made, it's got to make you proud as an alum to see him doing that. Uh, sure. But what, what stands out? Man, it's really everything. I know, as you talked about this lineage, there's a lot of former linebackers that play that was great. I was actually, right before y'all, I got on here, I was on the phone with Dominic Alexander, who's a great linebacker at OU as well. And so we were, and we were both talking about the linebackers. And we were talking about Danny and this, I mean, the first thing that you see on film with him, it's like he don't get tired. He's sideline to sideline. And when you get that of a linebacker, that's beautiful. And then you see the production. You see him always making tackles, TFLs. He's uh, He has some sacks. And, you know, the biggest thing, my favorite thing is the pick sixes. You know, I love interceptions myself. So just seeing that, like I said, I think I remember I had talked to him and he said uh, maybe two years ago, I don't even know if he remembers this, but I had met him in the training room. And we had talked a little bit, and he was just kind of talking about the system and stuff. And when he gets a hold of it, he's going to take off, and, and that's exactly what he's doing. Yeah, he he certainly is. And what have you seen in guys like Jaron Kanick and you know Kobe McKenzie, Kip Lewis? It's a it's a deeper group of linebackers than maybe what they had a year ago, right? And all of these guys seem to be out there making plays. Yeah, I think Invincible's defense in general, if you're at the linebackers' position, is made for you to eat. You know, if you're and Venable's defense, you go look at all his defense in the past, everyone, you always remember the linebackers that he had there because they're always productive, and that's how Venables has it set up. So, yeah, those guys, once they start following suit, and, you know, I know Kanick is still young, KP Lewis, and uh, what's the other guy's name, number 11, right? Yeah, Kobe McKenzie. Right, yeah, they're just, you can tell they're just young and growing up in the game, and there's going to be some building, uh, building blocks that they got to get over and stuff like that, so – you know, the same growth that Danny's going through, I'm sure you'll see the same growth in them as well, especially under Venables. How challenging is that to be in, and this was, was your story at one point in time, a sophomore starting linebacker, whether it's weak side, strong side, we, we hear about just the, all the different responsibilities you have. I mean, how tough is that to do? It's very tough. I mean, we're the quarterbacks on defense, right? So we're the ones that's responsible for getting the play called everybody. We're the ones responsible for making sure everybody's lined up. 
And after we get relined up and all that stuff, we're also responsible to make sure everybody's assignment's correct. Meaning if a defensive lineman, even though he's in control of the beat gap and he gets reached, now we have to be in the beat gap. So there's a lot of responsibilities that linebackers have. I think as a linebacker, you have to be intelligent. And I was talking to Dom, like I said earlier, what people don't know because they don't, we're not mic'd up, but me and Dom were very intelligent linebackers and we had great communication. And whenever we're on the same page, the D-line's on the same page, secondary's on the same page, and that's why I think our junior year, 2015, was the number one Big 12, number one defense in the Big 12. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and for free. Go to LinkedIn, use their purple hashtag hiring frame, add it to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Aside from the linebacker position, who else has impressed you so far? With Oklahoma's defense. I like Gentry Williams a lot, the yeah. DB. I mean, he just pops up. And one thing that he did that I don't, know, I don't know people saw, but there's been a few occasions where he has set the edge as a corner and made a tackle on the backfield, and he is not afraid to put his hat in a fire. And I, I appreciate that a lot. Um, uh, number two, Bo, is it Bowen? He's nice. Uh, he's He's been productive for us the past few years. Key Williams, when he's staying – consistent he's always our key lawrence my bad he's always popping up and then the freshman 22 he always just makes a play you know every every week he's either by the ball blocking a punt and as a freshman that's young and doing that it, it makes you excited to see so yeah I, who who are some guys that you played with that could jump in and, and be impactful like Peyton Bowen has as quickly as he has PJ Adabare is somebody, uh, you know, on the edge for Oklahoma yeah. that is getting some legitimate snaps. And I think we'll just continue to get better, but who, who are some guys that come to mind that from day one, you, you saw them offensively or defensively and it was, okay, this guy's, he's going to be able to play a little bit. I mean, there's so many, there are so many guys that were stacked. I mean, everybody knew, even though it took Obo a longer route to be a starter, everyone knew that Obo was special. We all knew that uh, Stephen Parker was a ball player uh, coming from Union and what he did as a freshman. Offensively, uh, you know, there was, un for, un, un, you know, some bad circumstance that happened to our boy Joe Mixon. But that fall camp, nobody could guard him in one-on-ones. And so stuff like that you've seen all the time. Mark Andrews, you know, you're, you're seeing guys do that. And there's some guys that were – ballers that never panned out just you know life happens that were like that but those are some of the top guys that i thought in my head that were like oh and neville neville was a freak i mean as big as he was moving around his first training camp though this is a funny story about neville he was like about to pass out every day he's from canada and oklahoma he he was dying but that big dude could move yeah he could move and he was one of those guys as a dallas cowboys fan i was like thrilled when the cowboys drafted him because right. it just his first step was just so, so good. Now, kind of as we kind of shift a little bit, we're talking, you know, down memory lane, some of the, yeah. the guys from the past. What was you, one of your favorite or one of your earliest OU Texas memories? What was it like the first time you walked into the Cotton Bowl? So my first memory might not be the best memory because as a starter, I was 2-1, and one, but overall I went 2-2, two and two, right? And my very – every time I think of OU Texas, my first memory – like you said, there's the buildup, the tunnel, all this stuff is great. You're going through there. I'm a freshman. I'm like, all right, I'm about to make a play. And we're wearing the gold printed stuff. Kick off. I'm running down there. I'm like, oh, I'm about to smack through the run reverse. I open this way and I get cracked. Boom. Can't breathe. Breath knocked out of me and everything. Get to the sideline. 
Game's over, we lose. I get back to my phone. My dad texts me, welcome to OU Texas football. So <laughs> that's kind of my first first memory is me getting cracked back on the kickoff and my dad kind of clowning me for it. Oh, man, you can always count on uh, dad <laughs> for a moment like that, man. Yeah. The, the OU Texas game, well, what's it like to play in? I mean, is this thing yeah. bigger, different than other games? I mean, what, what is it like? What, no, what are these bigger. guys getting into this week? Yeah, it's way bigger, man. I mean – they're 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 getting even more heightening of it because they're top five and oh five and oh top ranked teams coming into this game and that puts even more on it. It's the last one when they're in the Big Twelve, going to be SEC next. So there's a lot of hype that they're walking into with this game. But it's almost hard to explain to people who can't play in the game what it's like. You know, I mean, it's an experience that I'm blessed to say that I've got to experience. And so those guys are getting this opportunity to walk in both five and oh top ranked teams. Uh who's gonna win it the last year of the Big 12. And so stuff like that. It's it's definitely got a lot of, you know, it's, it's got a high, high expectation this year. So how do you guard yourself kind of mentally from all of the hype that surrounds it? Because you want to make it just like every other game. You want to treat it, you know, like it's it's week one and you're playing whoever but it's huge. It's yeah. huge. And you hear all the talk. I'm sure when you're on campus, everybody's you know talking to you about it, getting you hyped up for it. So how do you guard yourself mentally from it? You talk all you want and say, oh, it's just another game, but it's not. I mean, everybody knows that. You just got to find a way to channel those emotions and put it on the field. So yeah, everyone's going to talk it up. And luckily, the next biggest game is the next game. So that is the next game for them. So however big this game is, make it as big as it is. Just find a way to channel those emotions and go out there and play the football that you guys worked all week and not make those mental errors and mistakes and let the game get too too much for you. Have you been able to watch much of Texas this season? Yeah, I watched a lot of Texas because my cousin is one of the linebackers, Jalen Ford, one of the best linebackers, too, in the nation. That's my – yeah, that's one of my cousins. So I watched them a lot because I like to – That's support. amazing. Yeah, so – uh, last year he had a good game. I said, "Hey man, I was happy for you, but why you got to do it against OU?" And <laughs> so I, I do watch Texas, and uh, they're they're good. I think they're really good. I'm not gonna ever say Texas is back, but you know I'm five years removed from actually playing, and I can look at both teams now, and I, I think Texas is good. And I think I think OU is good too, and I think it's gonna be a great game. So, so talk about, sorry, real quick on Jalen Ford, like talk yeah. to us about his game. I mean, cause you're watching it with not just family eyes, but linebacker eyes. Right. So break down Jalen Ford and what makes him, you know, the preseason big 12 defensive player of the year mm -hmm. an all American last year, a guy that's one of the best linebackers in the country. But he, he has, so over the years when he watched the play, he kind of got sprinkled in, sprinkled in, sprinkled in. And the more he got sprinkled in, the more plays he got, the more production he got. And last year, his numbers were crazy. I mean, four picks or something like that and just tackles off the thing. So just seeing him grow up in that aspect, and I'm a, I'm kind of a distant cousin. Like, I met him when he was in high school and stuff like that. And ever since then, I've always just tried to support him because uh, I didn't always, you know, I didn't have someone that was that close to me that played in the league, and I just want to give as much insight. And I texted him earlier this year, not as a cousin, but as a former linebacker. I said, hey, everything you want to get, go get it this year. Because I truly believe, like you said, same with Danny. I think they can be all Americans, buckets of war winners, top three, four round draft picks, and that can set yourself up for life. And you know, that's just that's just part of the game that you love to see players mature and every year they get better and better and better. And that's what you've been that's what I've personally been seeing from him. Yeah, he's uh he's a heck of a football player. No, yeah. no doubt about it. Uh, so what is your scouting report on Texas? I mean, obviously very familiar there, but uh, right. what, what do you think offensively, defensively from the Longhorns? Yeah, so I know they have some injury reports. Um, offensively, they got two great running backs. Uh, Ewers has played a lot better this year. I mean, he, his numbers is almost identical completion rate and a little less than a couple hundred yards, I think, with Dylan Gabriel. But I think their skill players versus our skill players is going to be where it's the test at. Up front, it's going to be a dogfight as it is. Our offensive line has to hold up against their defensive front for sure. Uh, but I think it's, the game's going to be one of those skill players. I mean, they got good players, speed guys versus our DBs. And that's where I think we're going to have to do that. Um, their tight end's a monster. I'm not so sure if he's playing this week. Um, and that's where – 
you know, it's it's like individual battles lead to team battles, which lead to team success. So um, were these one-on-one against, whether it's Woody or Gentry, they have to win that. And the one-on-one with the tight end versus Danny and, and Camp Connect, they have to win that. And, that, and or the run, you know, it's, it's individual battles that they have to win for the collective team. And that's what I think you're going to actually see this weekend. Snap into the action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets. Guaranteed when you place a $5 bet, that's $200 in bonus bets. Win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action than to get ready for the Red River Showdown. The Oklahoma Sooners are six and a half point underdogs. The over-under set at 60 and a half. If you like Oklahoma, to be within six points of Texas or to outright win the game. Maybe you want to go to FanDuel and place a little money on that action. It's an easy-to-use app with a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over, under, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel is an official partner of the NFL. Where do you think Oklahoma might have an edge in this game? Um, well, I think, I think the edge is going to be the turnover margin, man. Mm -hmm. I think, um, even though Texas does produce turnovers, I think Dylan Gabriel from year last year to this year, I mean, he has, he has two picks, but he's shown to take care of the ball a lot better. Cincinnati had a little mess up with the fumble, but it just seems like he's more precise with his decisions and his, in the, and taking care of the ball has been a lot better. So the turnover margins will be good, and you see OU is like ball hawking and all that stuff. And I, I think that's where we might have the edge, you know. At least that's where I hope we have the edge. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's always a, a big one in this game. Right. There's There's been a lot of talk about Oklahoma running the football, the, the running back situation. W what do you make of uh, what's going on with OU running the football right now and what's going on with the running backs because we've seen four yeah. guys a lot of them but nobody's kind of i guess taking the gig right. what do you make of all of it yeah i mean i think sometimes we get spoiled as ou people and we've seen some of these greats come through and we expect it to be right then and right there and obviously they haven't found the one guy they want to go with which like you've seen we've seen four different running backs but i have faith in the and levy and demarco murray to get the right guy out there I got faith, obviously, in one of the best offensive line coaches to get the running O-line doing it. I think it's just a mesh. I think the receivers and uh, quarterback have a great uh, chemistry right now. Now it's just time to get the running game and doing so. And we're already averaging, what well, you said, top three offense. We're averaging a crazy amount of points, and we haven't even touched what our run game can do. So I just think the running backs and stuff is just, it's just getting the right offense, you know, chemistry with the with the front seven for, for the offense Um to get that going. I don't know what they're going to have to see from the running back wise. I mean, I think that's a tough decision. You got four guys that are nice that you just got to figure out who's going to make the bigger plays and roll with them. And that's all that is. What's one of the kind of key elements that a team has to achieve or something they have to be aware of as they go into OU Texas? What's, what's something that maybe, some of the veterans were telling you about when you were getting ready to play in OU Texas or the coaching staff or what's, what's key for this game. I think it goes back to what you had asked earlier about kind of checking the emotions. And now is you have to know how to navigate those emotions and still play at a good composure. We always call football like controlled violence. <laughs> Cause if you just go out there and recklessly play, you'll hurt your teammates. But if you can, no matter how much anger you have or hate towards Texas or how much you want to make a big play, if you find a way to, you know, navigate that emotions and play with composure, your play will stay high. Freshmen want to go out there and make this play and do these things. And next thing you know, they forget assignment, they get too juiced up and they, and that's where you see mistakes happen. So you got to find a way as a young player, don't let this moment become too big where you can't play within the measures and the limits of what the defense wants or the offense wants from you. Dylan Gabriel has, uh, has just been great this season and you know how it is it's Oklahoma and if there's if there's one position right it's it's always backup quarterback it's like oh my right. gosh give this guy a chance and we got this highly touted guy it's his turn and Jackson Arnold is there right he's waiting yeah. in the wings people in the fan base are excited about him and yet maybe that makes us take Dylan Gabriel a little bit for granted 
I think he's been playing fabulous so far yeah. this year, but what do you see from DG? They got the quarterback run game a little bit with him right. last week. What uh, what does he bring to the table for the Sooners? Well, he trucked the kid last week, so I want to make sure we talk about that. That was nice. But on a side note about Dylan Gabriel, I saw something early on, and I really hope Sooner fans don't make this mistake again. Okay. It, I, I had like a flashback PTSD with whenever they brought Jackson Arnold, who I think is a great, going to be a great player. And they cheered for him real loud. And when they took him out, they kind of booed. We saw that same situation with Spencer Rattler and Kayla Williams. And one of the most important things for a player is confidence. And as soon as you see a player's confidence get taken away, their play gets taken away. And I thought we saw that a little bit with Spencer. And I don't think that was fair to him. And I didn't want to see that with Dylan. And it kind of happened a little bit. But then Dylan, all he's done is played at a very high level. So that's the first thing that speaks to me about Dylan. Dylan doesn't seem rattled. Good or bad that comes, he's going to go out there and put his best foot forward. And so that's kind of what Lee is leading to some of his success. I think what he has, how many touchdowns? 15 and two or something like that. I mean, he's top 10 in all those numbers. I think he should be in talks as Heisman, just as any of these other quarterbacks in the league are right now. He's just one of the most slept on guys. And I think he's been playing at a phenomenal level. And I really, you know, Lord willing, he plays it like this for the rest of the year. Yeah, 15 passing touchdowns, four rushing touchdowns. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last two games, he's accounted for over 700 yards of total offense. Yeah, he's the dude's balling. been balling. You're absolutely right. And I think you mentioned he's playing with a level of confidence that doesn't seem, you know, concerned about all of the talk. Right. And it, it seems almost like he's playing with a bit of an edge. Yeah, to he's him, talking you know? trash sometimes. Yeah, and, and trucking like safeties, you know, like this 5'10", 5'11", dudes out there running safeties over and hurdling others. I mean, it's – it, and how – so let me ask this. How much does that kind of inspire a team when you yeah. see your quarterback going out there and laying the wood on somebody to pick up a few extra yards? No, you love that. I was talking recently about who's very similar to us, Baker Mayfield. You know, when Baker was at OU, we, we would ride for him. If Baker got into an altercation anywhere, we are ready to fight for him, right? Because he knows he'll fight for you. And that fighting on the football field is lowering your shoulder for that one extra yard. Make sure he gets the ball to you. Snapping on the old lineman whenever they're off on the snap count. All those things, players respect that. And it's needed by the quarterback. And, you know, Baker was very like that. I mean, he's like that to this day. That's his personality. And that's who he is as a player. And you're, you see him win over locker rooms. And once a quarterback wins of a locker room and they have the same identity, you see a lot of success. And you're seeing that with Dylan and you've seen him doing those things. And, and I appreciate it from a from a fan's perspective and as a former player's perspective. It's interesting, too, Jordan, because, I mean, Baker is the ultimate galvanizing force, right? I mean, he's the guy sitting up there in front of the microphone doing what you're not what you're yeah. taught not to do, which is, hey, I hate Texas. Put it on Twitter. I mean, it's like you, right. you could do that if you're Baker Mayfield because that's yeah. just Baker, right? But uh, that's not to say that there's anything wrong with maybe the way a Kyler Murray or Jalen Hurts right. approach things or DG. So, like, the quarterback position, I guess what I'm asking here, different personality traits, right, yeah. in the way they lead. H how is it with different quarterbacks leading different ways? Yeah, for sure. You got to understand, a leader – I'm a biblical man, so there's some stuff that talks about a leader, but they, 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 they get favor from the men around them, right? That doesn't mean it comes in one way. Right. For the locker room we had, we rolled with Baker. Kyler Murray was a ball player, a little more on the quiet side, but you knew he was a ball player who's gonna make plays. Jalen Hurts has this very different level of professionalism, right? I mean, his 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 motivational speeches make you want to run through a wall, right? And then you got Dylan Gabriel, who seeming to do a mixture of a lot of those things because he's keeping cool, he has a fire. So a leader understands what the team needs, right? And a leader also understands that you're also being a servant to the team. So whatever the team needs from you, you're able to do. And you're seeing that from Dylan. So, yeah, like you said, there's different forms of doing it. And one form doesn't mean it's better than the other. But whatever gets those teams the best, go out there and play. I mean, a great example of this on a side note is you look at the conversations that people talk about with the Oregon versus Colorado game. And how Lanning had a conversation with the players. Some people hated it, but Oregon responded to that and went and balled out. And Dion has a great way of motivating his players. Players saying it was personal, and they went out there and bought out for him previous games. So however you get your team to respond, that's how you do it from whether a coach's perspective or the leader as a, as, a, as a quarterback. What do you think it's like for a guy like Dylan Gabriel to you know have watched what happened last year 
in the Cotton Bowl, and then now it's he's going to get his opportunity yeah. to play Texas oh, this he year. To get out there, I already know. I know he's just like I'm, – I'm sure he was pissed. I was pissed. It was a cheap hit last year that took him out. Uh, we lost, what, 49-0, to so it was like the largest deficit ever. And even though he didn't play, I know he feels somewhat responsible and he's ready to get his lick back and stuff like that. So if anybody's ready to play, I, I know he is. Um, and so, you know, hopefully, hopefully he goes out there and balls out. Not that uh, there's just this pervasive thought nationally that Oklahoma has zero chance in the game, but it's a rare instance where Oklahoma nationally comes into this thing as the underdog, right? right? I mean, most people, because of what Texas did, they go to Alabama and win the game, and they, you know, respect is earned. They went and earned it. But uh, how, how does that fuel Oklahoma in this game? And just to clear the record, Oklahoma can win this game, right, regardless yes. of what folks nationally might think? No, it's a rivalry game, so you never know what can happen. I was talking to Devontae Bond earlier today about a former linebacker as well at OU, and sometimes the not-so-good team wins it. My junior year, we went to the college playoffs. Texas was terrible that year, and they beat us. So it doesn't really matter who's favored. It's At the end of the day, whoever's a better team on that day on Saturday is who's going to win. And if OU shows that they're the better team, no matter if they were 0-5 or 5-0, and they're going to win and vice versa for Texas. So I think we have a great chance. I don't – those over-unders and all that stuff that people play to, you don't know what's going to happen in the game. Nothing's fixed. There's no such thing as a script. It's just go out there and ball out. Yeah, there's no there's no script. It no. it all happens between the white lines and, and in the heads, and it's going to be a phenomenal game. Before we get you out of here, a couple, a couple final questions. We talked about your earliest OU memory, OU Texas memory, but we didn't, I don't think, get your favorite OU Texas memory. Yeah, my favorite is probably my senior year, just winning. Winning is – winning trumps everything. No matter – great game. I had all these tackles, big hits. I'm hearing the crowd, ooh. It's just winning and being able to put on that golden hat, go to the fair afterwards, dance in the locker room, go see the family at the fair, get you one of those Fletcher's corn dogs and a funnel cake. Like just the, the, the whole atmosphere and the culture of winning is – it, it's it's my favorite thing. And, of course, my senior year, um, being able to do that, going on a high note, yeah, that's uh, – I won't forget that. All right, final question here before we let you out of here on Locked On Sooners, Jordan. Prediction for this weekend. It doesn't have to be a score. It doesn't have to be who wins. But if you got one, we'd love to hear it. And if you just have an idea of how you feel like this game is going to go, you can share that one with us too. Man, don't don't worry, Jalen's not listening. Jalen Ford's not listening to this. Yeah, so it's yeah. not going to be bulletin uh, board material. Man, honestly, I don't know, man. I don't. I just want to predict a win. I just want to say, hey, we're going to win. I think it's going to be a grind, slug out one of those. But I'm, I'm, I'm ready to see. This is what I'm ready to see, and that's what I'm calling. We're going to have one of those sooner magic plays, right? We haven't had one of those sooner magic plays in a while, and we're going to get one back. Boom. You heard it here first. Sooner Magic coming to the Cotton Bowl on Saturday, 11 a.m. Central Time. Thanks, Jordan, so much for joining the show. Hey, y'all make sure you go give Jordan a follow at Jordan Evans underscore 50. Uh, this, this guy might be on an NFL sideline near you, might be playing for your favorite team, or hey, might be coaching one of your favorite teams. Right. Maybe Oklahoma, maybe uh, connected with a former coach. Who knows? We'll see what goes on. But Jordan, man, thanks so much for, for taking the time to join us, man. We'll have to have you back sometime. Yeah, for sure. I enjoyed it. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, make sure, again, you follow Jordan on Twitter at Jordan Evans underscore 50. Follow Josh on Twitter at Josh on Ref. Myself at John Nine Williams. The show is at Locked On Sooner. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcast. Again, free and available on every podcast platform. But until next time. He's Jordan. He's Josh. I'm John. Boomer. Sooner.